Well, let's quickly have a look at the title and then we can. Okay. So if uh, Aisha, could you call us the Fatiha? A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik yawm al-deen Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in Ihdina sirat al-mustaqim Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim خير المخضوب عليهم ولا Thank you. So, so we we'll look at the seal of Muhammad in sanctity, and this is going to be somewhat of a search, uh, looking for clues to a secret. But the, in secret in Ibn Arabi is actually a lot like the way we see jokes because Malamia, the Malamia, he says, they love to, they're always very isolated. However, they love to talk to widows and orphans and they like to tell jokes, but always true jokes. And so just the way the joke, it's not the punchline. So if someone gives you the punchline, that doesn't do anything. You've got to have the work up. You've got to have the story. And then when the punchline comes, it makes sense and, and it's just so funny. And the more you bring to the joke, the more you've had these experiences, the more likely that joke will be very strong for you, a very funny joke. And the same way with secrets, Ibn Arabi is telling us secrets all over the place, but they're secrets that are hidden in plain sight. And so the more we bring to them, the more they, they give to us when we, have them uncovered for us. So we're looking for this idea of, of sealing and, um, and sanctity and sealing. At the, the joke is in the word or the secret is in the word itself. Because seal, the khatam, the seal is both something that the, the physical putting a seal on the envelope with the wax and all of that. It's making something concluded um, and so and these are the way that we we've usually been told that uh, the seal of prophecy is that he's the, he's the last and the conclusion and that all the other ones are abrogated and things like that. And that's uh, actually the secret is that, that that's not the, the only picture. The other picture of, of sealing is when the seed is put inside the earth and you cover it up and then it grows. So that's a seal. That's a seal of, of prophecy or a seal of Muhammadan sanctity. The seed put inside the earth, covered over, and then watered so that it grows. The other uh, imagery of the seal is the honey that the, that the bees put inside the hexagons. And so when they fill the hexagons, that's called sealing. So the moment we see that, we realize that the secret has been hidden in, in plain sight. So we're looking now for that. We know that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his prophecy, he has sealed the prophecy. And if we extend that understanding, we'll see that he's the culmination of prophecy. So he is the way the seed is put in the earth, covered over, watered, and then blossoms. So to look for the inheritor of that, to look at what Ibn Arabi is saying, there is a inheritor of that, someone who has sealed that kind of sanctity, that kind of authority. We're looking for that. We need to find out more about, and to make the punchline really good, we need to fill it in with all of these things, all of these ideas. So in this one poem, we have the idea of that the Nur Muhammad, the light of Muhammad, was there before Adam was water and clay. So the prophecy is before time, before our physical organic time. And so that invisible light of Muhammad is there in all prophecies, 
and in all prophets and all messengers. And so when that becomes visible, we have the solar Islam, then all we see is the sun. But the third stage, when it becomes invisible again, that's the, that's the culmination of prophecy, not during his organic life, but after when he has moved on, passed on and becomes invisible again, that's the culmination of prophecy because then we look back and we see that all light has been this light. And we only know that when the sun sets and the moon is there. So the sun, which we can't see is reflected in the moon and all the stars. And now we understand the culmination of prophecy. So we're looking for something like that when Ibn Arabi is talking about the seal of this sanctity, this kind of authority. The second uh, stanza then, time period circled back to what it was before. So that's the circle and the loop. So we're seeing these loops again. And he says, I am the time period circled back to the beginning. So beginning and the end, we know are, are the one. And then three, this third stanza, when you whispered to him, so when he whispered to you, Allah, in the cave of Hira. So we're looking for these things when we're looking at what Ibn Arabi is talking about here. And he's told us many times the punchline, but he's waiting for us to catch the joke. And so that's what we're looking for now. And just to more context, remember we talked about then the solar Islam, then it's a lunar Islam, uh, that when the revelatory period is there, everything is in flux. So relationship among uh, classes, tribes, genders, all of that is in flux. Things are happening. And the moment that revelatory period ends, suddenly all the old ways, patriarchy and the Quraysh tribal views and all of these old ways are trying to come back in. So Aisha almost single-handedly is there to defend Islam uh, from these attacks and these the efforts to re to bring Islam back into patriarchy and back into Quraysh domination and things like that. And so there's this solar Islam that she's protecting. There's also a lunar Islam or that's the, the invisible light of Muhammad, which is also being protected. But here's who's it being protected by? That's the interesting part because the solar Islam the outward Islam being protected by Aisha, and then the interior Islam, who is protecting that? And we'll be looking somewhat as we go along to Khatija and Fatima. And if you now look at that, we realize that there's a creative tension between Aisha and Khatija, Aisha and Fatima. This creative tension it tells us that they, they had two different roles. One role was to be the mother of the faithful and guard solar Islam against the forces of patriarchy and Quraysh tribalism. And the other role was to guard the interiority of the Prophet Sallallahu and the light of Muhammad. And so there will be a tension between outward and inward. Okay. So that cave of Hira. So this is when the the first six months takes place. And the, the beginning of the six month period of prophecy is the dream vision and it's in the cave of Hira. And then when he goes, when he has this first vision and it shakes him, he goes to Khatija who puts him in her lap and says that Allah would never debase you. And so Khatija is then the one who is guarding and protecting this interior experience of the Prophet Sallallahu She's the guardian of that interior experience in the cave of Hira. And remember the hadith about the Nabuat that we have 146 of Nabuat, that the, tree, the true dream which we have, which we see, or which someone sees for us is 146 of Nabuat. And Aisha is saying that this first six months was dream visions. So 146 of 23 years, six months, 
that is the portion, the dream vision, that is for us to have, to see, and for others to see for us. So whatever or whoever is guarding this part of sanctity is guarding the dream, the dream vision. And whoever is guarding the exterior solar Islam is guarding the other prophecies that came, the ways that he received prophecy, such as Quran and so on. So we're looking for then dreams. We're looking for this interiority, this dreams. So Amna, the Umm Muhammad, the mother of Muhammad, we'll look at her. And, she's, and Ibn Arabi is saying, consider the dream of Amna when she was sleeping on the Hijr, sleeping on this half circle wall. So people would come to the wall in order to sleep there to get dreams. So she came there to get a dream. And the dream that was given to her was of her son, Muhammad Sallallahu who would be born. And because she sees him in the dream first, before she sees him physically, organically as a, as a body, she sees him as a dream. Therefore, she is the one who has been the mother to this dream, this interiority. And because it's a dream, he can come in many, many multiple forms throughout time. So people can be dreaming of him in many forms throughout time. So that is why sightings of him are a great multitude, Ibn Arabi says, and so he is distinguished from others. So that's one of the elements we need to see as this long shaggy dog story takes place, <laughs> as the long joke and secret takes place. That's one of the things. Amna sees the Prophet وسلم, in the dream first. And then after six months of this dream vision, when he was from, from the lap of Khatija to six months later, Aisha says that six months later, he was there sleeping and you know, going to sleep by the Kaaba in this place right over here, uh, and that he was going to sleep there in order to get a vision. And so the end of his six months takes place when he is, when he is woken and taken on the ascension, the mirage. And that's a physical ascension. And Ibn Arabi tells us that he, that's, he's the only one who has the physical ascension. He had other ascensions as well, and we have other ascensions as well, but no one else has the physical ascension. So we can see that at the end of six months, there's a seal saying from here onwards, the experiences of prophecy that he is going to get are going to be unaccessible to us. So that's the mirage. That's when the ascension takes place. Also in this same area, when he's walking back from the Kaaba and his uh, son has died from Khatija has died and, you know, unimaginably cruel, he hears someone taunting him. And the taunt is, you're going to be tailless. There's no one following you. So you're going to be like the lizard who loses the tail. No one's following you. And then when that taunt, that horrible insult comes to him, then the, a revelation comes to him. And the revelation is the Surah Al-Kawthar, 108th Surah. So, and uh, let's have uh, Omar recite this for us nice and slowly, please. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصلي لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر صدق الله العظيم We have indeed granted you the kawthar So pray, bless your Lord and sacrifice Lu, it is your insulter who is without posterity so thank you. So Ibn Arabi tells us when we see the word we, the first person plural in Quran, that's the divine names. 
So the divine names are saying, we have given you the Kauthar. So Kauthar, many, many meanings. And one of the meanings we want to look at to build this secret and to gain uh, the disclosure of the secret is that Kauthar and Kathir are multiplicities. So multiplicities, one of them is multiplicities, many, many. And we've just heard Ibn Arabi tell us that because his mother Amna dreamed of him first, he takes multiple forms. He has multiple images. So Kauthar is something about multiplicity. Uh, and Ibn Arabi also teaches us to look at words and to transpose them, to take their numerical sum and look at other combinations that make that same sum. So that means transposition. And one of them is inheritance. So the inheritance has been given. And so, the, and so the, what this is telling us is that, that he was told that you are not going to have a lineage from a child who is your son, a boy, a male lineage but you are going to have this multiplicity, this inheritance of multiplicity that will go uh, throughout time. And so the next one is fasalli. So fasalli, uh, so pray or bless. So when we hear salla, that's praying and blessing. And we have two sides of this verb, this practice. One is that Allah says that Allah and his, and his angels are blessing, pr praying, blessing, and so and bless, blessing you, and so praying you. So that's from the divine side. And then we have from our side a salah also, which is the prayer and, and, the, and the blessing that we have, the physical prayer, and also the blessing, salawat, that we give. So the salawat are these multiplicity of we... we you give multiple salawat. So Ibn Arabi says you only um, magnify, I mean, you only multiply the dhikr. The dhikr, and so that's the salawat, is, is what is multiplied, said over and over and over again. Fasalli li rabbika wa nahar. So this is interesting. Nahar, nahar, this is a word that has many meanings. And usually in the Quran translations, it's to sacrifice. So that's when you take the camel on Hajj and that camel is going to be sacrificed. So that's one meaning of Nahar. The other is that it means Sadr, it's the chest. And so specifically, Wasalli, to pray with this chest word means to put the arm, right arm over the left arm. So that's this, this motion. Okay. So that, that is, that is one of the interpretation or one of the meanings of this word to put your arms like this. And then it's the one who is insulting you who is going to have no progeny. So your progeny is going to be those who come after you who will give you benefit by praying for you. And so the Prophet said that you want to have an integrated child who could pray for you. So progeny means someone who's going to pray for you, a child who's going to pray for you a child or a grandchild, male or female. So the people who pray for him, that is give salawat, salah, pray, bless, are the ones who are going to be his progeny. And they are the ones who are going to be praying and blessing him, whether they are children or grandchildren, male or female. And so the ascension starts when he says, I was before the house between asleep and awake, when suddenly I heard a speaker saying, he is the one of the three between the two. And then the ascension begins. Okay. My heart is open, the priceless treasure. Ashka Muhammad, Ashka Muhammad. Allah, 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 Allah. 
Love's tears are falling, rain doors are moon soon. Ashki Muhammad, Ashki Muhammad, Allah, 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 Allah. Light of the Kaaba, perfume, Medina, the veil of prophet. The course of lovers bring sweet Mustafa into the embrace of noble Khadija. Allah, 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 Allah. Lightning is flashing, love's face is laughing, heart is awakened within the essence. Allah, 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 Allah. Thank you. So some of you are already getting the punchline, getting the secret, and that's the lightning is flashing. That's when, oh, that's what all of this means. So let's keep going. Let's keep adding to this. Now, we've seen this. I've set up the way uh, the Prophet Sallam, his experiences, Amna, Khatija, Aisha, Fatima, the dream. And Ibn Arabi then begins to sleep in the same place. And uh, he does he he does the investiture, so he gives the cloak of of uh, this sanctity to different people, to lots of different people. Um, most of them are women, and and most of them are in the dream. And so he talks about um, being having a dream when he is between the door of the house and the black stone. So we'll be looking at that. So this investiture is the hirka, so that cloak that's put on and says, you are, this is where we get in the West, we get the graduation cloak, that when you graduate, you get this, you know, that your robes, your cloak. Um, and so this is this investiture, it's, it's giving this sanctity and authority to someone else. And what's so interesting is that Ibn Arabi is doing that in dreams. Uh, Marta, could you, could you read that? Uh, Thank you. I clothed Sophia with the cloak of we poor ones when she was adorned with the adornment of the trusted ones. She came with every excellence and she transcended, she transcended her opposites coming from examination. And she completed perfectly her virtues and she became sanctified. And she perfumed herself with the entirety of the divine names. The spirits came to her in her niche, as they did with Mary. So she is the two, purely dedicated, a sister of the Virgin. She's protected like the pearl, not no thought of doubt. She's constant constant sound of judgment, a red anemone, descending to give her good tidings are the angels of the heaven, one night to bestow the inheritance of the lineage. I clothe my daughter Safri with a cloak from the family of beautiful manners. I clothed her with the clothing of taqwa, based on every creation inducing wonder. And I said, my daughter, travel with me on my path and with my course. The course is the law of the prophet, 
the Hashimi, the Arabi. This is how I closed her with a cloak based on every generous chosen teacher. I declare this, and I am Muhammad ibn al-Arabi. Thank you. So this is the cloak that's based not on one teacher or two teachers, but every generous chosen selected teacher. And then in this other one, uh, I clothed a young girl with a garment of great responsibility and protection. So this is, you can hear the sanctity, the weight of this. Um, and then remember Khatam, the seal, is also the seed covered with earth and then watered so that it blossoms. During a sleeping dream between the door of the house and the black stone, she kissed the stone and I kissed him with her kiss, the stone with her kiss. I vanished from my senses with a blush of delight. And then above that, the descending to give good tidings to bestow the inheritance of the lineage. Okay. Okay. I think I should have to take this. I clothed the full moon, brother, the Ethiopian, with a patched cloth cloak of, of perfect creation. When his light announced the intense darkness of the night after the cloak has disappeared, I said to him, O oh, full moon, do not become revealed, and do not swerve some day from the most beautiful paths. I told you with the cloak of simplicity and a treasure stored for another day. So you have stripped off the garment of the long stage of the day and what's just sufficient. Okay, thank you. Um, and this, this other one is I closed a young, a young girl from our hand with the cloak. Perfect completion itself was bestowed on her. Okay. So these are the these uh, investitures that take place in dreams through the dream. And I'll pull that together for you in just a minute. Let's do this. This investiture of the cloak, and it comes from, it's based not on one teacher or two teachers, but on all the generous and noble teachers. Sala to Allah, Salamu Allah, Alaike Ya Rasulallah. Sala to Allah, Salamu Allah, Alaike Ya Habibullah. Deep within my heart, the vast pressure of love, transforming me into clear diamond. Tears from your eyes, O oh mercy of Allah. All creation floods with this love of Rasul. Delight of Allah, peace of Allah. Be with you, beloved of Allah. Glorious one, praiseworthy one. Ya Nur Din, Sheikh of Islam. Your fragrant cloak, greenest of the green, is worn by your friends and kissed by your saints. Ashki Muhammad, passionate in love. Ahmed Mustafa, our lifeblood of love. Merging with Allah, subsisting in Allah. Emerging as Allah, Rasulullah, la, la, vessel of the light, nectar of Ali, Ya Nur al-Din, good tube of mystery, Ya Nur al-Din, nexus of reality, Ya Nur al-Din, good tube of Ya Nur al-Din, Gnostic master of the dream. Okay. 
So at the risk of spoiling the joke, does everyone see the secret that's coming out? This Gnostic master of the dream. There we go. <laughs> so this is our time. So we're looking at culmination. So remember the culmination of prophecy can only be seen when he has gone into the third section, the invisible section of the light of Muhammad And um, <clears throat> And we talked about not just one teacher, but all the teachers. So Effendi was up for Effendi. He was asked, what is Sufism? And his answer was people, men and women. There you go. All are Sufis, everyone. Yes, even the ones who insist they aren't Sufis with their very breathing, they are saying who, who, all the while denying that they are Sufis. So this is part of that. It's going to be an everyone situation here. So this is the third part of the night. It's our time. Okay, now we looked at um, this, this verse, the inna adena kal kalther. Indeed, we have given you the kalther. So pray, and then we'll use this word meaning to put your hands like this. So what's so very interesting about when these hands go like this? Well, first I'll back up. We talked about the salla right before that, verse two then, salla to pray and bless. And the salat is uh, described as being two. It's the, the fatiha is described as being the seven twinned. So it has, it's one part for Allah, one part for creation. So the Fatiha is, is understood as a, a double. It's part of the one goes to Allah, one comes to us. And so Ibn Arabi in that poem, of course, says, I am the mother of the book, the Fatiha. So the mother of the book and the two twin and the twin verses. So the two. And so the two is the back and forth, one for Allah, one for the creation, one for Allah, one for creation. So we have this going on. So the salah is Allah praises and, and, and praise, prays and blesses you, and you pray and bless, and it goes this way. Okay. And so then in the second half of that second verse, then, is this motion here. And notice that when you do this motion here, this moves, this one moves a little ways, and this one moves a long way and moves much faster, right, like that. See how that works, okay? So this motion here, Ibn Arabi tells us this is the motion of the divine. This is the motion of you, me. So my motion is this, and I am this one, the left hand. And then the right hand of Allah comes this way. So when you see this, you are seeing that Allah is covering up and protecting and guarding this hand here. And you'll see that when they come together, this one goes a short distance slowly, this one goes a long distance quickly. And so when I love my slave, so the slave comes to me slowly and one step, and I come very quickly with very high velocity. So there's the, that's the movement there. So when this happens, the two bows get closer and closer together until they're like this. So we've had that imagery of the bows, the two bow lengths. So when this bow, bows are coming closer and closer together, they stretch the membrane. So they, that's the thinning of the membrane we talked back way in April. So the, the, when the two bows come, the string will tighten because the bows, which are recurve bows like this, are going, are going like that. They're starting to stretch out and they're stretching this string. So it's becoming tighter and thinner, it's a thin membrane. So the, those things which make two bows come together stretch the membrane. And then we also were seeing that this is asymmetrical. So this bow comes slowly and moves a short, a short distance and this bow comes quickly and moves a greater distance. Okay, so that's the, when the slave comes near towards me, a hand span, I come near towards it, an arm span. And when it comes near to me, an arm span, I come a two arm span, a fathom. And when it comes to me walking, I come hastening. So uh, this speed, double that speed. This length, double that length. 
So that's the, that's the two bow lengths coming together. Okay. And um, <clears throat> so we have the intervals, the, the shiver. So that could be six inches, inches, then the dira, which could be the three foot, feet, and then the ba'a, which could be all of this uh, six foot uh, arm, fingertips to fingertips. And then we have walking, an intermediate pace, and a run. So those are the, the asymmetrical ways that these two bows are coming closer and closer together until they meet at the barzak, at the string, at the membrane. But as we know from Sota Rahman, the two never cross. So they never cross. The two oceans meet, but they don't cross. And then Ibn Arabi says, so watch your hands when you do this. Watch your hands. You're this one. And the right hand of God covers you this way. So that's this motion, motion right here. Okay. So, and then, and so that's my uh, nephew in Banidu Island in Dal Atoll. And so in the Maldives, they, they number their atolls by letters. So that's Dal Atoll. Um, see, letters and numbers are the same thing. And in fact, the script that they use are Arabic, uh, what we now call Arabic style writing of numbers. So that's their, their, their ABC is one, two, three. And then, uh, and also atoll. So he's, at, he's on a atolu. And atolu is the only Devehi word that shows up in English. And that's atoll is their word. That's their word for this string of islands. So, and if you want to get another secret, you'll watch how this very young child, see, when I hold my hands like this, it's this way, right? And you can see that the, this arm completely covers this arm. But look at his arms, very different, right? That's a secret and we won't tell that one yet. So then it is our time. So what happens here then is that Khalifa is the one someone acts from behind. So Khalifa is the Arabic min khalf, from behind. So if someone acts behind me and says, do this, do that, then I do this, I do that. And the one who's doing it is really this one who's behind me. But you see it's me doing those things. So you ask yourself, am I a Khalifa? So remember we had Khalifa as it's described and defined uh, in the edifice of Sufism and, and the edifice of the spiritual path and so on. Khalifa is the one someone is acting behind. And Ibn Arabi is saying, now if you ask, how would I know about myself whether I am someone completed, Kamal, or someone merely animated, which is called a human being? We say, so this is, how can I know if I am Kamal? So if you know from these edifices, if you've studied the edifices of spirituality, you'll know that all of these spiritual paths they will have this incredible hierarchy. And so, and this hierarchy will be the highest of them is going to be what in the Arabic we call Kamal. And each of these spiritual paths will have this powerful hierarchy. And this, what Ibn Arabi is doing here is he's saying, if you ask, if you are number one on the hierarchy, instead of saying, shame on you, how horrible, how rude, he's how ignorant, he'll say, God bless you for your question. <laughs> I'm going to tell you if you can how to find out if you are this highest level on this hierarchy. And he says that you will not know this unless in, you will not know if you are flushed against the image. So being perfect, complete, Kamal is being flush against the image. You will not know that if you are flush against the image, as long as you do not know his sallallahu alayhi wasallam word the prophet's word, the mu'min is a mirror of one's sibling. So the mu'min is the mirror of one's sibling. So you see yourself reflected and they see you reflected. The faithful see themselves in their sibling's mirror and the others see themselves in them. And this is only in the presence of the divine name al-mu'min. So al-mu'min is a divine name and it's our name, and both of us are looking in this mirror. 
So when we look in the mirror, we see the faithful, or we see al mu'min, we see the divine, we see God, when we look in the mirror, and vice versa, the other way around also. He said, so Allah said, indeed the mu'minun are siblings. So we, inna adenak al kawthar, indeed we gave you the kawthar, and kawthar is kathir, abundant multiplicity. And so kathir, so the, the, all of us who are reflections of the mu'min, all of us who are divine reflections are siblings. And the mu'min is kathir, abundant, like kawthar, to one's sibling. So one is abundant to one's siblings. So the multiple divine names are abundant to their reflections. And the multiple images that Um Muhammad Amna saw in her dream, they're here. And so the moment is kathir, kawthar, to one's sibling, just as one is wahid, one to oneself. If you see yourself this way, you may know that you are a khalifa, that someone is acting behind you, among the khulafa, that's just the plural, based on what you see in the image. So when you see this image and you know what you're looking at, then you are a khalifa. Now, if the true stands and establish you in unrestricted slave basis, ubudiyya, that you are a completely receptive slave to what is going to be shown to you, in which there is no Lord, in which you don't think you are the boss, or you are the God, or you are the Lord, then you are a Khalifa belonging to who truly? Yes, one is in the hand of God and in the possession of God. He exalted, say, glory be to the one who carried his slave by night. So that's the night ascension. Back in that other slide, he made us to he made him to be a pure slave, and he shed him of everything, even shedding him of his night ascension. He made him ascend. And so that after that six month period of dream vision, the beginning of the of the other parts that we don't have, he was made to ascend. And so he was carried by Burak. He had no allotment of lordship to do anything. So if you see yourself in this way, then you know that you are a Khalifa and you know who is behind you. And if you are seeing the mirror and you are seeing the mu'min in the mirror, then you know that you are complete and perfect because you have seen what is to be seen. And so it is our time. And part two next week, inshallah. <laughs> Well, we have one question already, Shuaib. Um, could you advise on where and whom to go to to receive spiritual tarbayat? Yeah, so the, this, this spiritual education is, uh, Ibn Arabi has many chapters on that because it's the, the student looking for the teacher and it is the greatest of grace to find the teacher. And you can spend many, many years looking for the teacher. And when you find the teacher, that's the grace. And that teacher was given to you uh, in pre-eternity, so before all of this. So it's not the question of, will I find one? But it'll, it's only a question of, when will I find one? And so you have already found your teacher, but you have to then find your teacher <laughs> in this world. And so that's, uh, that's what we do. And it's a state of grace. And so Ibn Arabi also says the many things that you do while you're waiting to find your teacher. And those are all of the, the kind of standard practices of the spirit. So that you, you, uh, you fast, you give charity, you pray, you do dhikr, you do all of these things that we know are the ways to prepare yourself and to do while you're waiting for your teacher. And so we'll also say where, where that you also then see your, 
the part of the culmination of this of this teacher student relationship is that you see things very differently and you actually begin to see all of the teachers at once in the in the face of your teacher you see all of the teachers and so when Ibnarbi is investing this girl in the dream he's investing her with the cloak of all of the teachers and so she's not looking at Ibn Arabi and saying, oh, you're my teacher. She's looking at all of the teachers. Oh, you are my teacher. So this you, that's what we do. That's part two. We'll find out who the you is in part two. <laughs> um, to see in our hearts mirror the face of our sheikh, is it also the experience of divine name of Muhmin? Right. And so that's, and one of the, one of the sort of secrets of the teacher is that that's the one that when you look at that face, you see the Prophet And so that that's so when we ask, how do I see the Prophet? Uh, one of the answers is you see the Prophet in your teacher. And so it's by grace that you are able to have that experience. And so the teacher can be physically next to you or can be already passed away or can be not yet born. And the same way, like in the jazz song, uh, the one I really love, her, her her mama hasn't been born and her daddy's dead. <laughs> so that's uh, but the that's that's uh, tells us that in a way that what we do love is is the timeless. And so uh, to have it's been there in timelessness, and that's where we access it. If we have grace, we see it in this world, and we see that timeless face of the light of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the face of the one who is our guide. Can you say more about the Mukmin being a mirror of their sibling? So the, the hadith or the statement is, the mu'min is a mirror of the mu'min. And Ibn Arabi is telling us that this is the existence of those two names in that one sentence is telling us that the divine mu'min is the mirror for the creation movement and the other way around because this is a mirror image. So the mirror image of the divine, there you go. So you are the mirror image of the divine. And this is because we are, we are built and created and imaged flush against the image of the divine. And so Ibn Arabi talks about a situation when, when in, a, in the poem, when, which we'll do part two, I give, the poem is that, that when you are flush against here, he sees that side, he sees the divine side, and he says, with my see the divine side with my heart, and my tongue is talking to you here. So Ibn Arabi sees himself in this membrane, one side, his heart is looking at Allah, and his tongue is speaking to creation. And so that's where he sees himself. And that is, uh, that is, Part of this mirror image, so in the, that you don't actually see the mirror, you see what's reflected in the mirror. Uh, a two-part question here. How, how did Hadija protect the prophets, peace be upon him, inner experience? And could you say more how she protected his inner experience and the impact of that spiritually for all of us? Yeah, um, so the uh, the the words that we uh, that are recorded that she said are that no one that Allah will not debase you or so or put you down, and so um, we understand this to be that in the lap of Khatija is that those secrets which when brought out would occasion ridicule from uh, the outside world, and uh, and so of course we have from Quran we we hear that he has been said oh you, that he has to be told you are not insane you you're, you haven't gone crazy and so this is what Khatija is the first one to tell him that you are protected in my lap and you will no one will ridicule what you're saying no one will will come at you with what you're saying and notice that they that that was protected and that is protected for all time but that his the child of theirs was not uh, was gave insults came through the child of him so that when his child died they insulted him so you now know that the protection it, that he got was the lap of Khatija and Fatima the one and that all of this inheritance is 
protected. And so that's why Ibn Arabi is using these images of the pearl that's protected. And Khatam, the seal, is the seed which is protected by the earth and watered and blossoms and blooms. Um, I love what you said about seeing all teachers in one's own shake. Thank you. Cannot wait to hear the detailed explanation next week, <laughs> inshallah. Um, can you elaborate on the seal of the prophet? If seed, can things appear different, but actually everything is in the seed. There isn't anything new or can there be new or or different manifestations. Right, so we're sort of, uh, we seem to be trained or, or, or what, what is transmitted often is that the seal of prophecy means that, uh, you know, here's an envelope full of prophecies and prophets and it's closed and sealed. And so there are no more prophets and no more messengers. And that's, and, and that, that is a meaning that is true in all facets. But in the one facet, the idea that there are all of these separate prophets, prophets and they're now uh, sealed and that's the last one that's going to come. Uh, that's not understanding the light of Muhammad sallam, that once we understand that the light of Muhammad is first and all of the prophets and messengers are next, then he then is the culmination saying that this all, this entire gift of communication from the divine to the creatures, all of that has been done by the light of Muhammad. And so all of the prophets and all the messengers are speaking in one language because they're speaking in the language of the light of Muhammad. And that's the culmination. And that can only be known once he passes and then he said, becomes invisible. And now we know the culmination of prophecy. And so in part two, we're looking at how Ibn Arabi, uh, that all of these teachers, they're not like, teacher one, teacher two, teacher three, put in an envelope and sealed, it's something quite different. It's all of these teachers' seeds put in the earth to be protected, watered with love, now bloom, grow and bloom. Um, was not Isa, alayhi salam, also brought up, ascended? Yeah, now that's the... Uh, uh, I have to look at all of that, what Ibn Arabi says about that one. That is very, very interesting. That opens up a lot of things. But suffice to say, you and me, we're not going to have a physical ascension. <laughs> we can leave it at that. But he is the word of God. And so, and he is the spirit of God. So I think that's, the, um, and Ibn Arabi keeps telling us that he's in the barzakh between the angelic and the human. Just the way the mushroom is between these, and the uh, you know all the and the moss is between mineral and plant. Well, uh, between the angelic and the human is this barzak, and in that barzak is is Jesus alayhi salam. So that is a different situation. So that's and that will bring that will bring yet another beautiful secret out. So we'll look at that one day, inshallah. Okay. Okay. Well, so everyone, everyone got it. So that's no more. <laughs> everyone has received it all. <laughs> In fact, here's a comment. Thank you for incorporating Elahis and Quran, enormous spiritual energy and resonance with these blessed ayats and Jirahi Elahis and. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's dot, 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 I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And what, yeah, this, and this is the same way that the, the, the secret and the punchline is not really the point because. It what the, the joke is the funnier the joke is it's because you've brought more to it, and the secret is more amazing when you've brought more to it, and so bringing more to it is is the key, and so there and so when we hear the punchline or the point or the well the, his, traditionally they call it nukta the the point when you hear the point that everything re pivots around. Uh, the power of that point depends on you. It depends on what you've brought to it. And this is part two also. 
So what is the secret to all of this? It's not that, oh, here's the punchline, here's the nukta, here's the point, here's the secret written down as a sentence. The point is that you are the one who is going to find that secret and see that point and get that joke. And no one else can do it but you. And each person will do it differently. And each person will bring a different experience to this story. Um, and then by doing that, we realize that the authority or the authenticity or the validity of the secret or the punchline or the nukta is not a sentence, but it's then you. So you here are. Are a few more, here are a few more questions and comments. Um, how do you and Ibn Arabi saying that after the Mohammedan seal of sanctity, there will be no more saints on the heart of Muhammad, peace be upon him? Because all are on the heart of Muhammad. And so if all are on the heart of Muhammad, then this is where the, the, the cloak is not the cloak of a single teacher or an Arab or a Islamic person or a Muslim who's Mosaic, Jewish, and all of these other ones, it will be all of them. And so that is, so this, so the heart is not going to be limited. And because it's not limited, those who are inheriting from this heart will also not be limited or defined. And Ibn Arabi keeps saying that. So how can you define my school of thought when I am drawing from the pen and the ocean of ink that never gets exhausted? And so you will expect that the inheritors, I'm going into part two already, the inheritors of Ibn Arabi will not be, they will not be, there may be one or two, but they will not be Arabic speaking, they will not be Muslims in Islam, they will not be doing things that are scholarly, kalam, theology, and all of these other things. They will not be doing those things as because they're inheritors of this heart which is not defined as Arabic uh, in time, solar Islam, and so on. So they will not be defined by exteriority, they will be defined by interiority, and the interiority will be this definition. And so ask, am I a Khalifa? It won't be, have I spent 50 years in this Sufi order in order to rise up through the ranks, and now I'm a Khalifa? It'll be something quite different. And the same way, oh, how can I know that I am, a, I am Kamal? Another you know, shocking question. And the answer will be, do you look in the mirror and do you see, who do you see? And if you see who you are supposed to see, then you are complete. Often Sheikh Afariha says, Lahis are the Quran. Yeah, Ibn Arabi uses the, uh, the, the word he says, um, says it's not necessarily in your nest to know that all words are Quran. And when he uses the word nest, you, the word for nest and lafs or phrase is the same word. So he's saying it might not be in your phraseology or your nest that all words are Quran. And the Quran is given how? It's the, the bird sits here and the mother bird comes in and puts food in the mouth. So the birds do not acquire or obtain the food and their nourishment. They are given their nourishment. And that provision then is the divine word kun, be, and it is. So everything is coming into a being by being told to be. So therefore everything coming into a being is has agreed and accepted to be because they've followed and complied and, and no, no, they have they have obeyed the command to be and they are and so and the command to be is a divine word be and so all beings are have obeyed the the divine imperative and they are therefore words of god kalimat allah they are words of God. So everything I see, which came into being by B, which is everything, is a word of God. And these beings, these words of God will never be exhausted. And they will always be words of God. And they will always then come through 
the mother who is bearing the word of God. So that's enough of part two. I won't say any more of that. <laughs> Um, are you saying that we are the secret? That's the one. There it is. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so, what relationship does? Oh, and what's sorry. So fun about this is that you can you can tell the joke over and over again, and it keeps getting better and better each time. And so when you say well, you're the secret, and then it's great, and then tomorrow you'll tell me you're the secret, and it will do. Oh, that's what it means. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Um, what relationship does the cloak have to the cloak? Okay, so cloaks are this are the imagery of come, in, come inside the cloak is the one. We have Um Salama coming in, the Hassan Hussein on the lap, and Ali and Fatima, and Um Salama says, am I not also one of the family? And she says, come into the cloak. So that's part of our coming into the cloak. The cloak is also the investiture, which we have in universities. You put on the cloak when you have graduated. Um, it is the conferring of this sanctity, of this authority. And this authority, which Ibn Arabi is conveying, is conveyed in dreams. And in the poems that we just cited, Claude Adas was the first one to, to point all this out, that there are 15 people cited in, the, in these poems that he gave the cloak to. Uh, 14 of them are women or girls, and many of them seem to be co uh, conveyed and conferred in dreams. So it is the interiority. So we have the exterior solar and we have the interiority. Yawahab, nourish us like the bay birds. <laughs> yeah, and that's the, that's the beauty. That's the, yeah, it's feed us, feed us. And so in the other one that, we, remember we had a long time ago, Abu Huraira says, I was given two parcels of, of, of knowledge and one parcel I gave to you, I doled it out to you. And the other parcel I kept in my balloon, my throat. And so what, what he's saying is that like the mother bird gave him the, the food and he kept it in the throat. He did not swallow it and absorb it and digest it. He just kept it there because later someone's going to come and he'll do, it's a little bit gross, but he'll do what the, the mother bird does, uh, regurgitate it and say, here you go, here you go, here you go, here you go. So in other words, there is an interior truth. There's an interior parcel that Abu Huraira was given and it's not been distributed until we're going squeak, 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 feed us. And then he takes it from his throat without himself saying, I understand it, or I know what it means, or I've digested it, or I've absorbed it. And he starts feeding us with it. So that is another one that we are fed after the time of when, the, when all of this is happening. So it's our time. Um, so Latifa offered a clarification of her earlier question what is the, she really meant what is the relationship of the cloak to the seal so the cloak then what does the cloak do it protects it guards it hides so it hides because uh, the same way that Ibn Arabi counsels us the way and this was in, in the Arab tradition that you don't name the beloved because when you name the beloved then someone is out there is going to out there attack that beloved and say oh that person is only this or just this or let me tell you all about this person and so that is a very hurtful situation so that you don't name the beloved so that it does, that the beloved doesn't get subject to these insults. You also, uh, Ibn Arabi says, you don't name the, 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 the what do you call that? Um, the status of some of these special beings. You don't say this one is a great X, Y, Z. You don't do that because those people who will accept you already know that. And those people who won't accept you, there's nothing you can say that's going to make them say, oh, this person is the great imam. Well, that's, that doesn't, if they're, they're not ready to see that, they're just going to attack. So therefore you don't name them and you don't say what their true positions are. And so that's part of cloaking. Part of cloaking is to protect. And then throughout all of these investitures in these poems that Ibn Arabi is writing to us, it's the concept of protection and, and, and being guarded. And so uh, in fact, in his, that poem that we'll look at in part two, that I am the Fatiha, there's also the concept of protected under and behind the curtain, there's someone protected. And usually it's the girl protected behind the curtain. Okay. So, all right, thank you. So, okay, well, so everyone get, get ready for part two and uh, explore all of these uh, 
these jokes and secrets. And as soon as you get them, uh, you know, enjoy them because that's and that's that's the why. You know, I, how can Ibn Arabi's footnote is ten thousand pages, but it's like every time I read, and I told you this, I think before, if I pick up volume one over there, open up to some page, I just can't stop. I just keep reading it. How can I keep reading it? Oh, it's so interesting. I've never heard about that. Isn't that the case? And it's fresh each time. So it's like the it's the gift that never quits giving and all of those things. And that's why it is just so beautiful to read them every single day, because every time there'll be something else that will just say, I never saw that before. And this is then I realized why I uh, I was talking to a, a colleague and he was saying, you know, you are so very precise in your translation. And I realized that I have to do that because I don't know what he's talking about some of the time or most of the time. So I've got to say every word perfectly so that it survives my misunderstanding. So it will be out there so that one day someone else will read it and say, that's what it means. And then I have that experience that I go back and say, oh, that's what it means, what I just wrote. That's what it means. So that's, uh, that's something about the freshness. And that's why he says, who's going to say what my school of thought is when the pen and the ocean are not going to dry up? So, okay, thank you. So alhamdulillah, good to see you. There's everyone. a chorus of alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, and that's the beautiful way to end, wonderful. <laughs> Thank Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Shuaib. Thank you so much. Salam alaikum, everybody. Thank you. 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 There we go. There we go. Now we got the perfect humanity. <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's no mystery that he's saying these are young girls and 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 my nephew is the picture up there. That's our. That's that's uh. That's the point. <laughs> Good.